Today we are going to talk about ELISA test. ELISA stands for enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. Again, ELISA stands for E for enzyme, L for linked, I for immuno, S for sorbent, A for assay. So ELISA test basically stands for enzyme linked immunosorbent assay, right? I will start this lecture with an example right that how this test is performed for in certain conditions let's suppose there is a person who has infection right and let's suppose we make a person here this is a person and this person has infection right and in his serum in the laboratory in his serum we want to detect a presence of a specific type of antigens to rule out or rule in about the presence of a certain microbe right now what we can do in ELISA, if we are going to do ELISA procedure the basis of this procedure is that there is a plastic plate which is called ELISA plate ELISA plate has uh, is yes it has many many micro wells it has many small depressions which are called micro, micro well yes. most of the ELISA plates have about 96 micro micro wells uh, 96 depressions right now what we do that in these micro wells we make the antigen antibody reactions right how we do that come here let's suppose if we are looking for an antigen B, we call antigens, let's suppose A antigen, B antigen, C antigen, hypothetical name. Let's suppose we are looking for a specific antigen that is it present in this person's blood or not. We are looking for that this antigen is present or not. In simplest form, how you can do the ELISA test? You put the patient's serum over here and coat the serum here. Is that right? Whatever antigens are present or whatever proteins are present here they will be coated in the plastic well they will be coated in plastic well let's suppose that a antigen is there b antigen is there and c antigen is there now these antigens will stick with the plastic surface this plate is made of poly styrene now this ELISA plate it is made of polystyrene and peptides or proteins and or different antigens antibodies they love to stick to this right now once antigens are stick over there let's suppose we are looking for the presence or absence of antigen B we are looking for antigen B now what we can do we can do this that in the laboratory we must have a reagent we should have a reagent in which there is preformed antibodies they are preformed antibodies right which are anti b if we have to look for a antigen then we have to apply which antibodies anti a and if you want to confirm the presence of c antigen what kind of reagent should be here anti c antibody this is clear yes, sir. that if you are looking for a antigen you must have in the laboratory anti a antibody if you are looking for b then you must have anti b antibody if you are looking specifically for c antigen you must have which antibodies anti c antibody let's suppose in this example as a doctor you want to confirm that patient serum has B antigen or not if you want to detect it that B antigen is present or not one way to do is simple ELISA test we also call it direct ELISA test in this test you will bring which antibodies anti B but these antibodies are already attached with certain types of enzymes let me make this here that let's suppose this is the antibody which is anti B right 
this is the antibody and with the fc portion of this antibody there is an enzyme, enzyme. there is an enzyme. an enzyme this is an enzyme which is covalently linked covalently linked with the fc portion of anti b antibody anti b antibody now this antibody along with this special type of enzyme this is called enzyme linked antibody what is it called enzyme, enzyme linked antibody. antibody and this enzyme has a very special capability that this enzyme if it is there it can convert a colorless colorless substrate sub substrate into colorful substrate in a colorful substrate. colorful product again there is an antibody which is enzyme linked yes, sir. and this enzyme is a very special type of enzyme right these special type of enzymes have capability to convert certain colorless substances into colorful substances yes. Yes. is that right yes. now so we can say this is our anti b antibody and this is linked with what enzyme. enzyme now if we put this antibody add here but remember before adding the antibody we have to add special blocking agent block is a chemical substance blocking agent which will bind with all that polystyrene surface all that plastic surface which is not having any antigen bound again step number one see we put the patient serum, serum over here yes. whatever antigens are present over there they are coated over here yes, sir. right then we wa wa wash this right after washing whatever washing whatever antigens are sticking there we add another substance which is called blocking agent yes. now it will block all the sites of this what is this plastic or polystyrene plate, plate yes. where no antigen is bound yes, sir. so now reaction can occur only at these three points at with a antigen or it can occur with b, b antigen, antigen or, or it can occur with c, c antigen. antigen is that clear yes. now we were looking for the presence or absence of antigen b, antigen b. b. and so what will bring we will bring a reagent or will bring such preformed antibodies which are anti b antibodies what are these antibodies anti b antibodies and they are enzyme linked yes. so what we do that when we add this over here tell me this antibody will bind with a antigen or it will bind with b antigen or it will recognize c antigen b, 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 b antigen. antigen so this antigen will basically bind with b, 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 b. b antigen right and it will not bind here and it will not bind here right it will not bind here right and it will not bind here it will only bind with the b antigen after adding these anti b antibodies which are already enzyme linked, linked. what are these these are enzyme linked. enzyme linked these are also enzyme linked and all of them are anti b this is anti b this is anti b this is anti b yes. so only these antibodies will react with b antigen they will not react with a and c yes. after this we will wash it and remove all the antibodies which are not bound with any antigen yes. again i will repeat first step was we put the serum and antigens present in the serum are coated on the Sorry. plastic well yes. Then we added the added the blocking agent, right? We washed this. Then we added the serum. Uh, so we ent added the laboratory reagent, which is having antibodies enzyme linked against a specific antigen. Yes. Here, this was anti B anti body. This anti B anti body added here, it will only react with the B antigen. Will not react with A, other A, A and C. Yes. When we'll wash it, all unbound. Enzyme linked antibody will be washed away. Only that will be left here, which is binding here. Now, after this, we will add here substrate. What we will add here? 
substrate and this is colorless substrate and if this enzyme is there after washing if it is sticking there it will convert this colorless substance into a color full product is that right it will convert colorless substrate into a colorful product now the color which is generated here this can be visualized or we use special type of eliza plate readers the special equipment which can not only look for this color even they can uh, decide how much coloration has been done right though, though that equipment which can read this color we call it spectro photo meter what we call it spectro photo meter now imagine two situations one situation is there was no b antigen here there was no b antigen here then of course it was not there yes it was not there. right there were other antigen but b antigen was not, not there. there if that was not there if we add their anti b will anti b react there no sir no will enzyme stick there or it will be washed away later washed, washed, washed away. away if b antigen was not there then anti b antibodies will not react and they will remain unbound yes sir then on washing stage unbound antibodies will be washed away so as no antigen no antibody interaction no immune complex formation here yes. no enzyme then you add the substrate will there be any coloration no sir no so this is a very basic form of format of this test right yes. this is called direct eliza test this procedure is called direct eliza testing right eliza test but it has some advantages and disadvantages this direct eliza test has some advantages and some disadvantages now what are those advantages or disadvantages let me explain this advantage of direct eliza test is that it is very quick way to perform the test just we take the patient sample it may be serum it may be urine it may be uh, csf cerebrospinal fluid or it may be uh, sputum whatever when you are looking for specific antigen direct eliza test is very simple you just take the sample apply it on a plastic surface right and whatever antigen you are suspecting you for that antigen specifically you have antibodies enzyme linked prepared we just add to the well enzyme linked antibodies if enzyme linked antibody react with the antigen then both of them will be fixed there if b right they are sorbent there you wash add the substrate of course if antigen is there and antibody is there both of them make immune reaction and then enzyme will be there and then what will happen substrate substrate will change the color and change in coloration or you can say development of coloration will tell us test is positive we say test is positive, positive. is that clear yes, now it has some advantages that this type of test is very simple yes. this kind of test is very simple yes, it is very quick to perform very rapidly there are very few steps you can rapidly do that quickly but it has one issue or two issues rather one issue is that when enzymes are linked with the antibodies or when antibodies are linked with the enzymes sometimes antibodies do not react well with the antigen when antibodies are enzyme linked or enzyme labeled such labeled or linked antibodies may not properly react with the antigen, antigen. Yes. so it means test reporting will not be reliable yes sir. yes sir again i will repeat that the issues with this advantage is it's a quick test and disadvantage of this test is that some of the antibodies when they are linked with the enzyme their immuno reactivity become less yes. and they don't appropriately react or bind with the antigen yes. right so reporting cannot be very reliable is that right yes. 
second let's suppose if there is one antigen molecule and one antibody react then how many enzymes will be held here only one is that right and very little color will be produced very little color will be produced now this problem is solved solved by a little modification in this format right what is that format and what is the modification this test can be modified in such a way that this is our plastic plate, plate. plate. again let's suppose same patient serum we add here let's suppose we are uh, there is a antigen and b antigen and c, c, c antigen these are adsorbed on the sticking on the surface here and this is our blocking agent so that if we add antibodies they will only react at these points if they are specific for that and not react anywhere else now we make antibodies we add the antibodies first you added the serum yes washed whatever sticking stay there add the blocking agent now you will add a reagent you add the antibody again let's suppose if you are look trying to detect the b anti gen then you will give which antibody anti b antibody. antibody but this antibody is not enzyme linked now it's a slightly different test this antibody which is directly reacting with the antigen is not enzyme linked here in basic format in direct test antibody which was anti b was enzyme linked now this antibody is not enzyme linked what we have done that we have injected this antibody also previously in some animals for example this is an animal and previously this antibody was injected in this animal now for this animal this antibody is foreign now this animal will this animal will make antibodies against this antibody again listen now very carefully let's suppose this was b antigen yes. and this is anti b antibody yes. if we anti b antibody is from human serum anti b antibody which is human i will write it here human suppose igg type this human igg when it is injected to an animal that animal will make antibodies against yes. this antibody yes right because for that animal immune system this is a foreign protein yes do you agree yes now this this is the immune head office of this animal right immune head quarter lymphocytes and all other system this antigen come over here now this antigen has sorry this antibody this antibody has three different let's suppose this is the antibody now on this antibody there are three different antigenic area or immunogenic area one and this is two and this is let's suppose mm three now listen carefully i will make this over here this is anti b antibody injected into an animal. animal now animal will process these components of antigen let's suppose these are three different parts of antibody these are three different, different parts, parts of, of antibody yes. right these three different parts of antibodies are slightly different from each other, each other. they are slightly different, different from each other yes. but all three parts can activate the immune system of the animal yes. so it means all three parts of this human antibody all three parts are immunogenic yes. Yes. now some antibodies from here will be made against this component some other antibodies will be made against this component some other antibodies will be made against this component is that right yes. now all antibodies is are coming they are against the same antigen yes. but this antigen has slightly different immunogenic areas these sub areas are called epitopes what are they called epitopes, epitopes. so one antigen may have many epitope, epitope. just imagine 
my face is an antigen if my face is an antigen then this is one epitope this is another epitope eyes are another epitope so we can say ear eyes and nose these are three epitopes on one face yes sir clear yes. if someone has to react if this antigen is injected in the animal if that is going to react it may make anti ear antibodies or make anti eye antibody or make anti nose antibody are you clear yes. now this was one antigen this was one antigen but multiple clones of the animal immune system has react, reacted and made antibodies against different component such antibodies like anti ear anti eye and anti nose for example these three type of antibodies they are against the same they are elicited by the same antigen but elicited by different epitopes yes, yes. these antibodies are called polyclonal antibodies what are they called polyclonal, polyclonal antibodies i want to make monoclonal and polyclonal polyclonal very clear again if my face is an antigen yes this antigen has many different small areas some of those areas are immunogenic it means those area can produce activate immune system and make the antibodies yes sir. let's suppose in my face there is ear antigen nose and eye an immune system of animal right yes. for example this is the ear this is nose and this is eye when immune system will make antibodies yes. right they will be coming from different clones of b cells and these antibodies some of them will be anti this point yes sir. some will be anti triangle some will be anti circle, circle. now these antibodies are polyclonal Poly. yes, is that right yes. but let's suppose if in the test animal or in the target animal you only inject my ears yes. he will make antibodies only against the yes. ear yes. that is by one clone yes. we call it Monoclonal. monoclonal right actually in laboratory monoclonal antibodies are made by very special type of cells which are called hybridomas we will not go into detail of those what i really want to tell you when we are checking for b antigen we give anti b antibody, antibody. this anti b antibody itself is monoclonal right but we already in the laboratory we have second set of antibodies which was what polyclonal now we bring the polyclonal antibodies and add to this system now this polyclonal antibody will react here polyclonal antibody will also here and also react here so multiple multiple antibodies are reacting and each of these antibody is enzyme linked each of this antibody is enzyme linked <coughs> now in this case when all of them are enzyme linked with with one antigen one antibody is reacting here and with this blue antibody blue antibody is also called primary antibody with that enzyme linked antibodies are reacting and one is reacting or multiple are reacting multiple, multiple are reacting if multiple are reacting then substrate activation will be here substrate activation was only one unit and here it will be three unit here it will be three so in in this plate there will be more color produced as compared to the first example yes sir your understanding yes sir what does it mean because with the same degree of reaction in the first plate less color is produced with the same degree of antigen antibody reaction in the second place more color is produced yes sir it means that this here the color production system is amplified yes. we have done amplification of color system color system coloring system yes. now because this is an amplified situation so do you think which will be more sensitive test if there is a very small amount of antigen first plate mechanism will detect it better 
और सेकंड प्लेट मैकेनिज्म विल डिटेक्ट इट बेटर सेकंड प्लेट सेकंड प्लेट सो व्हाट वी हैव डन बाय दिस मॉडिफिकेशन दैट हियर प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडी वाज एंजाइम लिंक्ड हियर प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडी वाज नॉट एंजाइम लिंक्ड बट अगेंस्ट द प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडी वी हैव एंजाइम लिंक्ड एंटीबॉडीज व्हिच आर पॉलीक्लोनल एंड मल्टीपल एंजाइम लिंक्ड एंटीबॉडी आर कैपेबल ऑफ बाइंडिंग विद वन primary antibody and when multiple antibodies secondary antibodies are attached over here then multiple enzyme linked molecules are there so relatively more substrate is converted into color a more intense color is produced so by this simple modification for from first plate to the second plate we have enhanced the uh, production of color we have made the test more sensitive we have made the test more sensitive now in this example enzyme linked molecule was directly attached with the antigen so this is called direct elisa test here enzyme linked molecules are not directly atta uh, attached with antigen antigen they are attached with antibody. through another antibody yes, so it means here enzyme linked antibodies are not directly attaching with antigen, antigen. we call it indirect elisa yeah. test yes. so it is clear now yes. we'll write it here in direct elisa testing test right let's draw it again if you understand it more clearly now i'm going to take your test you have to follow it and tell me how the direct and indirect test is done performed right first of all if we are looking for an antigen in direct test what we do first of all we'll put the serum here first of all you will put the serum here and different antigen if they are there they will get attached here then you will add the yes very good now you guys are going to tell then you will add the blocking agent, agent. so serum has been coated, coated. on the plate yes. and then blocking agent after that now you will bring the reagent which reagent you should bring if you are looking for b antigen which anti reagent should have anti b this is anti b, b. Um, antibody this anti b antibody should be attached with enzyme. enzyme it should be attached with enzyme, enzyme. right now if you are looking for a antigen you must have here anti a if you are looking for c antigen you must have anti c here we are looking for b antigen that is it there or not and how much it is there so anti b enzyme linked antibodies will be added to the plate if we add anti b then of course anti b antibodies as b antigen is there will bind with that and enzyme will be attached linked to this after this you will wash this plate so that whatever extra molecule of anti b are there they should be washed away only those molecules are anti b molecules are left there which are able to bind with the b antigen clear now antigen antibody reaction has occurred yes. is that right if b antigen is there and reaction has occurred is it right question is that we cannot see this reaction can we see this no sir can you smell it no, can you touch it and determine is it there or not no, no. these are so micro molecules these are small molecules they are actually macro but you cannot touch it you cannot detect by smell you cannot visualize it now we need to visualize it how what we do here we add the substrate, substrate and color will come over here and the color will be produced and once the color is produced right once the color is produced we say test is positive, positive right so this antibody okay let me make it like a doll this whole system this enzyme linked antibody is called detector antibody because it act like a detective what is it detector antibody or detection antibody now this is 
enzyme and this is the colorful substrate clear yes sir problems with this type of testing and advantage advantage is it is slow or fast fast, fast. it is simple or complex simple. simple very good it is quick and simple test is that right these are the advantages now disadvantages of this that antibodies which are enzyme linked they do not react very well with the target antigen yes, sir. Yes. it means their immunoreactivity is less yes. so will they give reliable result no, no this is one issue with this type of testing second issue is if you have to do for example if we have four patients one patient has antigen a yes. other patient has antigen b third we are suspecting antigen c fourth we are suspecting antigen d, d. now these are four samples from four different patients and we are suspecting four different antigens antigens in this we are suspecting four different yeah, antigens, antigens to that and if we have to bring enzyme linked molecules do you think the same enzyme linked molecule can work with all of them no, no. here we have to apply anti -A. if we have to check for a we have to have anti a for b we have to have anti b for c we have to have anti c, c. and for d we have to have anti d yeah. this is also a complication in this test that we have to have very different type of enzyme linked antibodies, antibodies if we are looking for different presence of different antigen yes. is that clear yes, sir. so advantage quick yes. advantage simple disadvantage poor immunoreactivity of enzyme label yes. antibodies with the antigen disadvantage that we need lot of different antigens antibodies enzyme labeled antibodies which are directed against different yes. antigen yes. clear yes, sir. now we come to the next indirect test in this test let's suppose antigen is already there a b and c and then what you are doing Block. blocking agent but now we'll modify the test a little bit we will not with in this case we we are not adding enzyme linked antib no we are adding antib molecule or antibodies which are not enzyme linked which are not enzyme linked is that right yes. and uh, if b antigen is there this primary antibody which is not enzyme linked that will also bind there we wash after that we add what antibodies antibodies, antibodies directed against this primary antibodies yes, antibodies which are directed against the different epitopes of this primary antibody yes, yes, now they may react at same place or different places different. at different places if they are reacting at different places but all of them are having enzyme. Enzyme. enzyme so what will happen all of them will give the reaction color reaction so this color reaction now this was this doll is our detection system yes sir antibody enzyme linked now here three detection system have been added or three secondary antibodies or enzyme linked antibodies are binding with the one primary is that right yes, so because there is more enzyme so color production will be less or more more Col color production will be more let's suppose this star is the color production right so same amount of antigen can give stronger color reaction by this arrangement so this test is more sensitive, sensitive. this test is more sensitive. sensitive but in this this is less sensitive but here antibody and antigen are enzyme linked antibodies are directly reacting so you call it direct elisa here enzyme linked antibodies are indirectly reacting with antigen via another antibody so we call it indirect is that clear yes. now i will make another way to explain the same thing application that this type of test can be determined to use the antigen presence presence and can also be determined to look for the presence of antibody is that right yes let's suppose you are looking for 
NTB antibody in my blood. If you are looking for NTB antibody in my blood, you will use this indirect method. What you will do? You tell me the steps. So this is the micro well, Eliza plate well. You take Dr. Najib serum. You put it over there, right? You want to know that do I have NTB antibody or not? You want to know do I have NTB antibody or not? In that case, what antigens you should have already here? B, yes. So you have many B antigens which are already we use the word pre-coated. The Eliza plate has pre-coated pre-coated B antigens. Then you add my serum. Then you add my serum. And if I am having anti-B antibody then reaction will be positive. My serum components will react here. We will we put my serum, if there is an anti-B antibody that will react over here, yes. you wash it. So all other molecules are washed oh, away. Yes. Only those molecules are left, antigen antibody molecules which are Complexes. making immune complexes. Of course, here also we have added what? Blocking yes. agent. Now, if my blood had anti-B antibody, that will be sticking here. Is that right? Yes. But we cannot see it. How to detect it? How to? Yeah. Detected. We will now add another. Uh, what? What will add? Yes. Antibody. Enzyme link. Antibody. Antibody. Antibodies. What we will add? Enzyme, Enzyme link. Antibodies. Antibodies. And if my blood was having anti-B antibodies, only then enzyme linked antibodies will stick there. Only then. Enzyme linked antibodies will stick there. stick there. And now all those enzyme molecules which are sticking there or enzyme linked antibodies which are sticking there, if you add the substrate, yes. what will happen? Coloration, coloration will occur. Yes. From that coloration, you know that test is positive. I do have anti-B antibodies. I do have anti-B antibodies. Uh, it means if coloration come, maybe if this is anti-HIV antibody, if this is anti-HIV antibody, then my life will not be colorful anymore. Yes. You understand that? Yes. Yes. Clear? And of course, what will happen? That, that color which come, you can measure with a very sensitive, what is this? Color reader, which is called photo spectrometer, spectrophotometer. And that will give exactly how much color is there. And where, with the degree of coloration, it can also determine what is the concentration or amount of antibodies here. Yes, is that right? Yes, so this test can tell that spe uh, spe specific molecule is present or not. Yes. We say qualitative test. But it can also tell how much those molecules are present, Quantity. less or more. Quantity. So it is, this test is also quantitative. quantitative. So we can say ELISA test is qualitative test also. Yes. It can answer you yes or no specific yes. antigen or antibody is present or not yes. and it can also tell how strong the color came if color came or not it is qualitative Quality. how strong the color came that tells the quantity, quantity. Yes. right if i have more antib more strongly color will come if i have less antib then <laughs> weak yes. color signal will come any question up to this no, no. no so this was one way here was direct test there was indirect test and the real difference between them is that as compared to direct indirect has more sensitivity yes, sir. as it produces more color then we come to another concept sometimes we are looking sometimes we are looking for a specific molecule in my blood you are searching for a molecule that molecule may be antigen, that may be antibody, it may be any protein or peptide or hormone or antibiotic, whatever. You are looking for a very special molecule in my blood, macro molecule. Let's suppose uh, you are looking for, okay, you are looking for a special type of antigen. We go with back, same example. Which antigen we know very well? B. Now, question is that, that this is B, what? Antigen. antigen. Let's suppose this is I antigen. This is L antigen. Right? Yes, sir. Now, 
look here very carefully antibody which react with b can also react with i this epitope of i and this epitope of l because these components are same maybe same so it means if we identify one antigen by one specific type of antibody through only one domain there can be mistake yes, but if we can recognize the antigen with two mechanisms for example from the top and also from the bottom bottom it will be different antibody here bottom antibody will be different, different. here bottom will be different. different now imagine okay i will make this uh, red antigen b suppose i and l, l. we can say these are three antigens they have some shared epitopes yes. and some epitopes which are totally different if you want to recognize one of these molecule very specifically very Spe specifically do you think one antibody is better or two antibody recognition is better two antibody, two antibody recognition is better. better again i will tell you that let's suppose this my face is an antigen yes it has let's suppose these are epitope nose eyes and ears yes. if you try to recognize me only by my nose you can make a mistake but if you try to recognize me among many people through my nose eyes and ear there are more specific more better chance you will specifically recognize my face yes sir. is that clear yes. in the same way sometimes one antigen has multiple epitopes one antigen has multiple, multiple epitopes and if we recognize the antigen through multiple epitopes then recognition will be more specific yes is that right which is example here now i'm going to tell you let's suppose we are looking for b antigen we are looking for b antigen but we want a very very specific reaction we don't want that test become positive even if i is there or l is there we want a very specific for that purpose elisa test is modified in an other way elisa test is modified in an other way how it is modified now focus here this is our elisa place micro well let's suppose if we have to look for b what antigen right then in the laboratory we must have such plates which are pre coated with anti b's yes sir we should have in the laboratory what pre coated such such elisa plates which are pre coated with anti now these are three antibodies which are anti b antibodies now you were looking b antigen if you take patient serum here you add the patient sample here yes sir if b antigen is there then antigen will bind let's suppose this is the point here the b is binding right now let's suppose when patient serum was added there were many antigen a b c d e f so many yes, only b will stick here only what will stick here b b and all other antigens will not be adsorbed adsorbed here very good will not be sticking here when we wash yes, what sir. will happen wash away all will wash except b, b yes. so it means these antibodies which were already there they were there to capture only which antigen b antigen b antigen we call them capture antibodies so if you want a very very specific test you should have the elisa plate with pre coated antibodies antibodies against specific antigen or against the antigen of interest yes. here our elisa plate was loaded with pre coated with anti b antibodies is that right yes. then what we do how do we do it further test now we add second reagent that is also having nt b antibodies. antibodies but those are enzyme linked we are also having 
anti B antibodies, but these antibodies are enzyme, enzyme linked. So if B antigen was there only then other anti B molecule which are enzyme linked will stick over there. Your understanding? Yes, sir. So we will add to the well anti B enzyme linked antibodies and then again wash. If there was no B antigen, all of them will be unbound and they wash away. Yes. And they wow. wash away. But if B antigen was there, then it will be captured by capture yes, yes, antibodies. And if they are held over there, then if you anti B enzyme linked molecule pour over there, they will get stick. Yes, yes, Immune reaction will occur. Is that right? So this was our first antibody which was capture antibody yes. and this was our second enzyme linked antibody which was now antigen is recognized by two domains two epitope capture antibody was reacting with different epitope and this second antibody is reacting with different epitope so the double recognition of what antigen right after that of course you add what substrate and color will change so what is the difference in this test and that test here was also we were looking for antigen b here we were also looking for okay i will make it more simple here we are also looking for which b antigen here the problem is that this anti b antibody can react with b antigen but it can also cross react with I antigen or L antigen. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. But here we have capture antibodies. And if we have ca capture antibodies, so capture antibodies bind with different domain of B antigen yes. and reagent antibodies, second antibodies which are linked with enzyme, they bind with different domain. So if really there is B antigen, only then this both antibodies will bind. If they were I, then one of them will not bind. Yes. Or if they were L, one of them will not, not bind. So, uh, test will become more specific or less specific? More, more specific. It will become more, more specific. specific. So, when we change this basic format into this way, we increase the specificity of the test. We increase the specificity, specificity of the test. When we move in this direction, what we do? We increase the sensitivity, sensitivity of the test. You are understanding? This is the basic format. Direct ELISA testing is a basic format. These days it is used less. We are using those reactions which are more sensitive or which are more specific. specific. Now in this case, you see our antigen. What is this? This antigen is sandwiched between the two antibodies. Here the antigen is sandwiched between the two antibodies between what is this antibody first antibody and the second antibody so we call this sandwich ELISA what we call it sandwich, sandwich ELISA so we call it sandwich ELISA right sandwich ELISA what is sandwich ELISA test it's a format in which antigen which we are looking for right is captured it is reacting with two different antibodies, antibodies which are reacting with the same antigen but at its different epitope in sandwich testing sandwich ELISA what is happening that our ELISA plate is pre-coated with capture, capture antibodies, antibodies. Yes. right if antigen react there then we add the second antibody and if second antibody is enzyme linked yes, sir. direct reaction occur we call it direct sandwich reaction what is it direct, direct sandwich, sandwich ELISA what is it direct sandwich ELISA what is the difference in direct ELISA and direct sandwich ELISA is that in direct ELISA antibody antigen is paste, uh, pasted there antigen is planted there and antibody detect yes, sir. here antigen is first reacting with pre coated antibodies and then react with the detection system this enzyme linked molecule is detection system 
is that right so this is direct sandwich but here antigen is sandwich and in direct ELISA antigen is not sandwich, sandwich. any confusion up to this no, sir. now so we can say again when you are moving from here to this direction what you are doing increasing sensitivity, sensitivity. and when you are moving from here to in this format sandwich format you are what you are doing increasing specificity. specificity now you will tell me if we want we are looking for a hormone let's suppose you are looking aldosterone levels in my blood if you are looking for aldosterone level in my blood so aldosterone is now antigen yes. and you want to know what is the exact level of aldosterone first you want to know aldosterone is there or not and if it is there what is the exact level then you need a test which is very sensitive and very specific yes, sir. we want a test which is very sensitive and very specific so we should design another format yes. what is that look here again okay forget about aldosterone we st still go with the B antigen yes. if we are looking for B antigen and we want to be very specific we have to sandwich and if we want to be very sensitive we have to amplify yes, we have to yes, amplify the signal yes, so if we are looking for B antigen with high specificity what should be the antibodies which should be pre-coated capture antibodies anti B, B. B. let's suppose anti B come here right this is anti B. B and we add the serum and B molecule bind over here now in to increase the specificity we add another antibody which is against the different domain of the same B antigen. Is that right? Yes, sir. If B antigen is there only then second antibody will react. First antibody was capture antibody which captured the antigen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If antigen is captured then second antibody will react. But second antibody here is not enzyme length. Okay. As second antibody here was not enzyme length. Here second antibody is not, not enzyme length. Then what we do, we react there, what? Polyclonal enzyme length antibodies. So those antibodies will bind here. They will bind here and they will bind here. And they are enzyme length. They are enzyme length. So a lot of color will be produced, right? Yes. And photo uh, spectrophotometer will read that color, yes. right? And uh, with the intensity of the color, because more antibodies, uh, more antigen, more second antibodies bind, more enzyme linked antibodies bind, more substrate is converted into colored molecules, more intensity of the color. Yes. So with degree of intensity of the color, we can determine the quantity of B antigen. antigen. Now, this test is number one. B molecule is sandwiched between the two antibodies. 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 Right? And signals are also antibodies. amplified. So it is highly specific and highly sensitive. sensitive. Very good. It is it has high specificity and plus high sensitivity. sensitivity. And this test, do you think this is, even though this is sandwich, this is also sandwich? Because in both cases, uh, antigen is sandwiched between two, two antibodies. antibodies. So both are sand sandwich tests. But this is direct sandwich, ELISA. This is indirect, indirect sandwich, ELISA. This is okay. indirect sandwich, ELISA. Indirect sandwich, ELISA. Any question up to this? No, no, because this topic disturbed me a lot. So I'm going to make it a very rapid review of this. First of all, what is the ELISA test? ELISA test is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. It means by an enzyme-linked molecule, we are detecting the immune component which are sorbent or adherent with the ELISA plate or solid surface. Yes. Is that right? Yes. 
you understand it basic format what you do you have just antigen is that right you have just antigen and against that antigen specific antibodies are enzyme linked and if the color changes by the substrate when substrate added this is direct elisa yes. it is very simple test very quick test but it has two problem or three problem number one enzyme linked antibodies sometimes don't react well number two for every antigen you need to have different type of enzyme linked antibody yes right third signals are very weak no amplification there fourth even specificity is not too high now then what happen scientist modified the direct elisa test these days direct elisa test is used very less we are mostly using indirect elisa test or we are using sandwich test indirect elisa test what was there antigen then relevant antibody then against that relevant antibody we have enzyme linked antibodies and because if antigen is there then this blue antibody will be sticking there yes sir here blue is the primary yes sir here blue is also primary blue antibody but the issue is here primary antibody is enzyme linked enzyme their primary antibody is no, not enzyme linked is that right then we add the detector antibodies here the primary antibody itself was detector here we add the detector antibodies which are polyclonal and react with the primary antibody and then they convert the substrate into color right here in both of these test what is happening we are increasing the specificity of test but sandwiching the antigen between the two antibody, antibody molecule is that right yes. so we are trying to recognize the antigen through by two different epitopes by two different domains in sandwich elisa what is happening that plates are already pre coated, coated with the antibodies against the antigen of interest yes. is that right and once antigen is added after that of course we do all those steps that we do the blocking and we do the washing i will go to the basic principle once capture antibody bind with the antigen one domain then we add the second antibody if second antibody is enzyme linked then it is direct sandwich if second antibody is not enzyme linked right and third antibody is enzyme linked and multiple third antibodies can react with multiple domains of second antibody then this is indirect sandwich, sandwich. 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 Elisa. so any question about all this is it clear yes sir okay now i will ask you a question i put an antigen here on my hand i put antigen, antigen. and on the top of the antigen i put enzyme linked antibody and then substrate what is this test direct, direct. direct, direct. test direct. very good now i'll put antigen on my hand i put antigen. antigen this is our elisa plate antigen then we add the serum with the antibody is that right yes sir and if antigen antibody react then i'm adding the enzyme, enzyme linked antibodies yes. polyclonal yes sir right and substrate convert into intense color what is this test indirect, indirect. indirect. elisa, elisa test. test now another test this is a plastic plate it has pre coated capture antibodies let's suppose against a specific antigen yes sir they are capture antibodies against a specific antigen if in our sample that antigen is present an antigen react yes then we add enzyme. second antibody which is enzyme linked yes sir and substrate convert into chlorophyll substance what is this test direct sandwich, direct sandwich. very good yes. now we do another test we take the plate now you will tell me how it we are going to do now indirect sandwich test what is the first requirement here there should be pre coated capture antibodies very good second step you add the sample which might have antigens let's suppose it has the relevant antigens antigen antibody reaction occur capture antibodies capture the antigen we wash but specific antigen remain captured 
after that we will add antibodies you are going to tell me uh, those antibodies will be enzyme linked or not enzyme linked no, not, not enzyme linked yes. monoclonal antibodies not, not, not enzyme, enzyme linked. linked and after that if we add polyclonal antibodies against the second antibody yes sir second antibody is human antibodies and because these polyclonal antibodies are directed against the human antibodies we call these red antibodies anti-human anti antibodies anti-human anti antibodies. antibodies or anti-human immunoglobulins Global. anyway so if the test is capture antibody antigen antibody without enzyme yeah. labeling and then polyclonal enzyme Linked antibodies react and substrate changes into intense color. What was this test? Indirect, indirect sandwich test. Now tell me, direct is more sensitive or indirect test is more sensitive? Indirect. Okay. Then tell me, direct is more specific or sandwich is more? Sandwich. Sandwich is more specific. specific. Very good. Out of different ELISA format which are made on the board, which is most sensitive and most specific? Indirect sandwich. Indirect sandwich. Eliza. Very good. Now few words more. Just to sum up. ELISA test is very easy to do as compared to other tests. For example, there are another test uh, called radio immuno assay. Right? Radio immuno assay. But that test also can give the results like ELISA. Problem is that if here there is a laboratory which is doing ELISA test for example for the B antigen detection but there is another laboratory which is going to do radio immuno assay for the same antigen these are we are trying to detect the same antigen by different method either ELISA method or radio immuno assay yes. now ELISA is a very good it is getting popular and radio immuno assay is now not getting popular why reason being I will teach the radio immuno assay in the next lecture in detail but I just want to tell you the differences. ELISA is simple test and ELISA is not involving radiation. It is not involving special uh, equipment to detect the radiation. It is not involving the problems of uh, this radiation, radioactive material disposal. So ELISA is now getting popular. It is inexpensive, it is simple, no expensive equipment is required no even legal issue to have radioactive material but if radio immuno assay you have to do for the same antigen detection there are issues radio immuno test even though it's very sensitive uh, but it has some issues number one you have to have a special license radio immuno assay secondly you have to have a radioactive isotopes thirdly you have to have uh, gamma count gamma counters or other equipment which detect the radioactivity then you are having a problem how to dispose the radioactive material yes. so due to this reason ELISA is far more common now and popular as compared to radio immuno assay but still in the next lecture I will have a small lecture about radio immuno assay again ELISA can be used to detect the antigens it can be used to detect the antibodies can be used to now anti may be used antigens may be microbial antigens or maybe hormones right or there may be some antibiotics so many molecules in our blood can be detected by ELISA testing even pregnancy test when females get pregnant of course females get pregnant males don't so when females get pregnant one of the hormone is released in their blood that is HCG human chorionic gonadotropin now that hormone can also be detected by ELISA testing right if someone is having suspecting that he got exposed to the HIV infection then again ELISA can help because ELISA testing can tell that person has HIV antigens or not or that person is having anti HIV antibodies or not right so basic principles of ELISA test clear? Yes, sir. Class dismissed. Thank you.